Okay, hello everyone. This is Sarah from California WIC Association and thank you for joining us for our webinar today. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few housekeeping things here. Uh, everyone should be muted. Um, if you have questions, please type them into the chat box and we'll get to them at the end of each presentation. Um, and maybe if we have some time also at the end. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Karen Farley, our Executive Director, for a little intro. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. We're excited to share with you a lot of information this morning about new, I guess it's afternoon, about nutrition incentives that are available to boost access for fruit and vegetable purchase by families in California. We're going to focus on the retail, farmer's market, and healthcare opportunities today. So our first speaker is Joe Prickett, who's a dietitian down at the UC San Diego School of Medicine Center for Community Health. And he's going to talk to us about the Gus Schumacher Nutrition Incentive Program and then drill down to some really exciting opportunities at the retail level. So please join me in welcoming Joe. Thank you, Karen. Well, I'd first like to start off by thanking Karen Farley, um, Executive Director of the California WIC Association you know, for the opportunity to introduce you to the Gus Schumacher Nutrition Incentive Program. So the um, presentation goals and objectives for today are to really to provide everyone an overview of the national Gus Schumacher uh, Nutrition Incentive Program, and then also to provide an overview of a few of the nutrition incentive programs in California. And that includes the Moss Fresco, the More Fresh Program, at grocery stores across Southern California, uh, the Market Match Program at farmers markets across all of California, and the All In Alameda, the Food as Medicine Initiative, which is a produce prescription program at health clinics in Alameda County. And then we look forward to your questions and um, providing you any information that you would like in addition to what we've provided on today's presentations. So a little history and background in 2008, um, the Farm Bill authorized funding to see if nutrition incentives, financial incentives provided to SNAP recipients would actually help to increase their consumption of fruits and vegetables. And this funding actually led to the Healthy, Incentive, Healthy Incentives Pilot. And this pilot, for the SNAP recipients who participated in this pilot, um, they increased their consumption of fruits and vegetables on average by about 26%. So based on these findings, um, the Farm Bill in 2014 designated $100 million to what was called the Food Insecurity Nutrition Incentive Program. And then in 2018, the funding was increased to $250 million and the program was renamed in honor of Gus Schumacher a former undersecretary of agriculture who was devoted or dedicated to helping low-income families access healthy local food for better health. And in addition, um, the 2018 funding also provided for a new national nutrition incentive hub. This hub is led by the Gretchen Swanson Center for Nutrition and the Fair Food Network. Um, they provide technical assistance innovation, evaluation, reporting, and support for all of the nutrition incentive programs uh, nationwide. The key goal, or the key goals for the, nutri uh, the Gus Schumacher Nutrition Incentive Program, there's four main key goals. The first is to increase fruit and vegetable purchase and consumption among program participants. Uh, second is to improve nutrition and health status of participating households. Third goal is to reduce individual and household food insecurity. And then the fourth goal, which is really um, talk speaks to our produce prescription programs, it's to reduce health care use and associated costs. So on a national level, there's approximately 30 or 2,600 retailers across 38 states and the District of Columbia that are currently providing nutrition incentive programs. And for today's presentation, we have shared with everyone a resource list of the 348 nutrition incentive sites across 38 counties 
in California that are currently providing nutrition incentive programs uh, for CalFresh recipients and others across California. So nutrition incentive programs, they empower families, they support farmers and retailers, and they lift up local economies. Um, they do this by providing an economic stimulus for local economies. Um, and in California, nutrition incentive programs support approximately 1,000 farmers and over 70,000 CalFresh households. And in California alone, you know, SNAP represents a buying power of nearly $8 billion in California. And according to the National Grocers Association, SNAP at a national level, it represents the lifeblood of the retail grocery business. So it's really critical and really key uh, to retail grocers. Um, I'd now like to provide an overview of the Moss Fresco, the More Fresh program. Uh, this is a randomized a control trial study uh, that's actually um, being led by the UC San Diego Center for Community Health. Um, the Center for Community Health really works toward health equity um, for all communities across San Diego and beyond. And we're working on this program in conjunction with Northgate Gonzalez Market. I don't know if everyone is familiar with Northgate, but they're one of the largest Hispanic grocery chains in the United States. Uh, they've got 41 um, markets across Southern California. They work closely with WIC and USDA and health departments, and they have just an incredible health promotion program called Viva La Salud. And that's the reason why they were selected to participate in our program, the Mas Fresco More Fresh Nutrition Incentive Program. So the Mas Fresco, the More Fresh Program is, uh, it's, it's a program at retail at Northgate, at six Northgate Gonzalez markets here in Southern California. And it provides the opportunity for CalFresh recipients to earn up to $10, $20, or $40 a month. It's a one-to-one -one match. So for every $1 that they spend on fruits and vegetables, they can earn a free dollar up to either $10, $20, or $40 a month, depending on which um, study group they've been randomly assigned to when they enrolled in the program. To date, we've um, enrolled 4,500 um, CalFresh households across California. So for 2017, 18, 19, and 20, we've been enrolling around somewhere between 11, 1,000 to 1,500 study participants per year. And you can see this Mi Familia card here. This is the actual loyalty card that when they sign up for the program, they get this special Northgate Gonzalez Market loyalty card. And when they present the card uh, to the cashier, when they check out, and when they pay for their fresh fruits and vegetables with their CalFresh benefits, they instantaneously earn $1 for every dollar of fruits and vegetables that they purchase. Again, up to 10, 20, or $40 a month, depending on which study group they've been um, assigned to. Now, in September of 2020, one of the reasons that we were so um, looking forward to sharing this information with you today is that later this year, the Moss Fresco More Fresh program is expanding from six stores to 41 Northgate Gonzalez markets across all of Southern California. And furthermore, we're increasing the match from $40 a month to $100 a month. And in addition, instead of it being a one to $1 match, when um, program participants buy their fruits and vegetables, with their EBT benefits, with their CalFresh EBT benefits, they're gonna be randomly assigned to receive either $2 for every dollar that they buy or $4 for every dollar of fruits and vegetables that they purchase. So in this way, it's gonna make it much, much easier uh, for CalFresh recipients uh, to both purchase and consume more fruits and vegetables uh, for better health. We're also conducting a comprehensive um, evaluation of our program and including point of sale transaction data as well as baseline and then six month, 12 month and follow up and 18 month follow up surveys. In addition to expanding the program to 41 stores, 
uh, Moss Fresco More Fresh is going online. So with this, any CalFresh recipient living within five miles of any of the 41 Northgate Gonzales markets across California, they can enroll anywhere from anywhere at any time into the Moss Fresco program. And, and currently we have the program enrollment and it's, it's going on for the six stores that are currently online and, they're, and folks are receiving $40 a month. But come September, that's gonna go to $100 a month. And any, again, any CalFresh recipient across California can enroll and participate as long as they live within five miles of a Northgate Gonzales market. I'd now like to share some of the key findings from the Moss Fresco program. So the approximately 60% of the program participants, they report that the number one barrier to eating more fruits and vegetables is that fruits and vegetables cost too much. So thankfully, through their participation in the Moss Fresco More Fresh program, you can see that that barrier has been reduced over time. At baseline, the response was 56.9% of the participants indicated that cost was the number one barrier. And then 12 months later, it had dropped significantly down to 47.6% of the program participants. So in that sense, the program is doing what we really were looking for it to do is to make fruits and vegetables more affordable and more accessible. And then another goal of the program study was to really support USDA in identifying, well, what is the most opportune match uh, for a financial incentive for program participants? So that's why we um, actually randomly um, selected folks to receive either 10, 20, or $40 a month. Now, what you can see is that at each and every level, uh, from 10 to 20 to 40, the ability of the program participants to purchase more fruits and vegetables increases with the increasing level of the financial incentive. So that was something that we also were, you know, felt very good about that for USDA and for others, we know that as the incentive increases, so does the monthly increase or for, so does the monthly purchase of the fruits and vegetables. In fact, um, on average, about 95% of program participants report that they have been able to increase the amount of fruits and vegetables purchased as a result of their participation in the Moss Fresco More Fresh program. And in addition to that, um, we were really happy to hear that, you know, approximately 80% of the program participants report healthier eating habits as well as increased um, healthy eating knowledge as a result of their participation in the uh, Moss Fresco More Fresh program. And then finally, we come to food, food security. So this is really the crux of the entire uh, nutrition incentive program, which was formerly called the Food Insecurity Nutrition Incentive Program. As you can see, the Moss Fresco program, we're dealing with a very food insecure population. Approximately 80% of all of the program participants in Moss Fresco are food insecure. And it's broken down to pretty much 40% report suffering from very low food security and 40% report suffering from low food insecure or low food security. So this is significantly elevated above the national average. You can see that um, SNAP recipients nationally, they report about 48% of them suffer from either very low or low uh, food security. And nationally, for, for everyone in the nation, it's just about 12%, 11.8% 11, of folks across the country report suffering from low or very low uh, food security. So again, fortunately for the program participants that participated in, in Moss Fresco, they report that over the course of their time participating in the Moss Fresco program, that the level of food insecurity has actually decreased. So we were very happy to hear that, very happy to know that, since that is one of the main goals and objectives of the USDA and also of the Moss Fresco More Fresh program. So that is, um, that concludes my presentation for today. I'd like to um, thank you for the opportunity to share information on the National Gus Schumacher Nutrition Incentive Program and the Moss Fresco More Fresh program. And in closing, 
I would like to honor Gus Schumacher with the following tribute that was um, paid to him by Dan Glickman, a former U.S. Um, Secretary of Agriculture from 1995 to 2001. And this is what Dan Glickman had to say about Gus Schumacher. And this is a quote. If you save one life, you save the entire world. Gus Schumacher saved the world many times over. So thank you, everyone. A pleasure introducing you to the Nutrition Incentive Program, both nationally and here in California. Thank you, Joe. That was a lot of really, um, a lot of information and, and really useful. And I see that um, at least one person has a question, but I think we will save that to the end. Um, and participants, if you want to type your question into the chat, you can, or just raise your hand and Sarah will unmute you at the end. But I did want to just point out one observation is the fact that the research you're doing is increase those financial incentives. And I think as we become more sophisticated in these incentives, especially here in California, and even more so now with COVID, we realize that we have to give people more money to buy the food they need. And as your data show, they actually bought the food and then had changed eating habits. And it's just encouraging to see more realistic work being done on what people really need to live and eat well and healthily in California. So thank you, Joe. Next, I'd like to introduce Jenna Faley, who's the market, who's the manager of the Farmers Market Access and Equity Program at the Ecology Center in Berkeley. And CWA has worked a lot with Ecology Center on our efforts to help local agencies engage with farmers markets. And Jenna has a lot of information to share with us today, also on partnerships like Joe described and increasing access for families to fresh produce. So thank you, Jenna. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity and welcome everyone to the webinar. Thanks, Joe, for sharing more about the Mas Fresco program. And that was a beautiful tribute to Gus Schumacher. As mentioned, I'll be sharing the Market Match program with you today. The Market Match program is supported by our partners at California Department of Agriculture's Office of Farm to Fork. I want to begin first today with the disclosure about Market Match, and that is that it really has two primary goals. The first is to make fresh food affordable to low income individuals, families, and communities. The second is to support California farmers that are small in comparison to industrial producers in this great agriculture state. And these small farmers create a network called the regional food system. During this presentation, I want to show you how these two program goals are symbiotic. They strengthen each other and interconnect, making fresh food affordable while supporting California farmers. So a quick note on uh, the organization that Market Match is under, Ecology Center's broad mission is to inspire and build a sustainable, healthy, and just future for the East Bay, California, and beyond. And in the Ecology Center sits the Food and Farming Program, the Farmers Market Access and Equity Program at the Ecology Center supports the Market Match Program, provides EBT support to farmers markets across the state, and additionally is a core partner in the National Nutrition Incentive Hub that Joe mentioned. Outside of my team, the Ecology Center Food and Farming Program founded and now leads the California Alliance of Farmers Markets, a statewide farmers market industry group, and also operates three weekly farmers markets in Berkeley. So I'm going to start the presentation today with a little bit of history about Ecology Center and Market Match. In 2003, after SNAP fully transitioned from a paper coupon to debit card, there was a big drop in participation at farmers markets and a real need to develop an EBT model and system that worked in the farmers market setting. The Ecology Center stepped in to start providing statewide technical assistance to farmers markets and farmers on operating an EBT program at the farmer's market. Alongside this problem solving, farmer's markets were thinking of ways to entice more SNAP shoppers to farmer's markets. And then comes in market match. In 2009, the organization Roots of Change created the market match program in coordination with City Heights Farmer's Market in central San Diego. 
This market partnered with the International Rescue Committee and served 27 immigrant farmers and growers. The program was a success at improving community food security while supporting small farmers. The first market match was at this market, City Heights, uh, but in 2009, that program expanded and brought in about half a dozen partners to pilot it at more locations. And the program just kept on growing and growing. In 2012, Roots of Change transitioned Market Match to Ecology Center because of our experience and relationships with farmers markets and supporting hundreds and adding EBT. Roots of Change is also a catalytic organization and turned, turned its focus to the California Food Policy Council. Ecology Center received a USDA grant in 2015 and now in 2020 to continue to grow and expand market match to serve more food insecure households and farmers. The USDA grant is matched with California state funds that were made possible with legislation championed by assembly member Phil Ting and co-sponsored by the Ecology Center, Roots of Change, and Latinos for Healthy California. So where are we today? In 2020, Market Match is available at over 300 farmers markets or farm direct outlets in 38 of California's counties and growing. Next month, we are expanding to nine new farmers markets in three counties that previously did not have the program. How exactly does the program work? The program doubles SNAP dollars and sometimes WIC benefits at the farmer's market. A typical program offers a 10 to $20 match, ensuring that low-income consumers can access 20 to $40 worth of fresh produce each time they visit a farmer's market. In most places, the customer will swipe their CalFresh card at the farmer's market information booth and receive tokens to spend like cash on fresh fruits and vegetables. Market Match is effective because it has a coordinated statewide network of diverse organizations and programs working towards a shared vision. There are 58 active Market Match partner organizations around the state. And as WIC practitioners, you likely have a Market Match partner to work with in your community. Market Match enables healthy food choices by making healthy, farm fresh food affordable and consistently accessible. As you can see on the slide, one participant had the opinion that being able to eat new foods completely changed the way their family lived their lives and contributed to an understanding of a healthy lifestyle. Our evaluation um, showed a number of different um, health benefits, three listed here on the slide. First, it showed that 85% of market match shoppers bought different kinds of fruits and vegetables than they would have otherwise purchased. 73% of shoppers reported an increase in the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables. And in 2009, Market Match provided approximately 9 million servings of fresh, healthy fruits and vegetables to underserved communities. Another benefit of Market Match is that it invests in local economies. There is a lot of research that shows that direct market producers like small farmers invest in the local economy at higher rates than non-direct market producers. Small farmers buy their farm supplies and inputs in the communities they live in more often than industrial volume agriculture, which makes a big impact on local communities. One farmer shared that market matchment bringing back more dollars to their high need rural community and as you can see on the slide, combined market match and CalFresh resulted in 5 million directly spent with farmers through 281,000 transactions last year. The regional food system is more important than ever. The COVID-19 pandemic has allowed us to see the consequences of a consolidated food chain. Farmers markets support the regional food system by providing an essential marketplace for farmers, especially new and small farmers that do not have the capacity to supply institutional or other markets. Farmers markets also allow us to experience the food chain, which is an important component to food literacy. The farmers market context helps us to build relationships between people and producers. Farmers markets have historically been venues to interact with food through sampling or viewing a cooking demonstration set up by a SNAP-Ed educator. And finally, 
farmers markets help to decentralize the food supply. COVID-19 has really displayed how farmers markets step up to respond to the threat and organize their community. As one example, in Visalia, California, the farmers market quickly organized their farmers to provide farm fresh boxes to the community. And they were able to open up a drive through delivery for farm fresh food, as you can see pictured. They called on their community volunteers and received many people's talent, time and effort. One volunteer built out a full service website for customers to order farm fresh boxes. Two families in the community offered their time to pack produce boxes every Saturday morning at the market. And the Zalia Farmers Market applied market match to the produce boxes, meaning that every family paying with CalFresh received a 50% discount and nourishing foods for the week accessed in a safe way. So how can WIC engage in market match and largely the farmers market community? Well, I have three suggestions today on how to engage with farmers markets. And the first is to check out your local market. Markets across the state collaborate with WIC, offer nutrition education, and have other activities and opportunities that may be a perfect fit for your WIC clinic and families. For example, the Crescent City Farmers Market has a has historically offered the POP or Power of Produce Club designed for children that may be served by WIC. The second is to understand how clients can use WIC benefits at the farmer's market. Stay in touch with your local farmer's market about eWIC and how they will or can support it. And then finally, this presentation will hopefully allow you to understand and describe market match to your clients. And I have a few resources that may be helpful on this front. The first is a web page, smfinder.org. It's on the bottom left side of that screen. It's a full service map of California's farmers markets and describes which farmers markets accept EBT, market match, WIC, and which ones have no benefits. You can use the table of contents to differentiate the green, the rust, and orange colored pins to see which benefits are at your nearby farmers market. Here's another view of that website. As you can see, you can search for markets in a particular city. Here we're looking at San Diego at the City Heights Certified Market. And as you can see um, here in the yellow box, it describes which benefits are accepted in addition to EBT. So this market accepts WIC. After this webinar, I recommend that you open the map and look around your city and community to see which farmers markets are located near you and what benefits they offer so that you can pass that important resource along. We also have many templates that you can download and print. If you're interested in displaying a poster about Market Match in your WIC clinic or another place, um, or if you'd like to distribute flyers, please get in touch with me. And here is my contact information where you can reach out. This is the Farmers Market Access and Equity Team at the Ecology Center that makes the magic of Market Match happen. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in today. And with that, I will turn the presentation um, back to Karen. Thank you, Jenna. That was really informative and um, it was great to see the history of the Ecology Center and the Market Match expansion and the resource that Joe provided and the online Farmers Market Finder will be great resources for people to um, use as they're trying to help participants identify, especially right now during COVID, where they can go to, to get some extra help with purchasing their fruits and vegetables. So really helpful. All right, well, our third presenter um, I'm happy to introduce Dr. Stephen Chen. He's the Chief Medical Officer of All In Alameda County. And All In focuses on poverty reduction through an integrative health equity lens. And what Dr. Chen is gonna to talk to us today about is food as medicine. And he has some really vibrant information to share about linking healthcare and systems and food systems, community systems to better serve patients and bring them healthy foods and produce and good health outcomes. So thank you, Dr. Chen. Thank you very much, Karen, for that introduction. 
thank you, Joe and Jenny, Jen for Jenna for the setup before. I'm going to share my screen and hopefully this works. Can you all see the screen? Yes, no? No. Okay. Well done. Thanks again. How about now? Yes. All right. Thank you all. So I'm going to talk about food as medicine and how we're moving upstream to improve community health in the healthcare space. And I really appreciated the previous um, presentations because we really got to see a healthy retail perspective. We saw uh, the farm farmers markets perspective. Now you're going to get uh, perspective this from health centers. I want to start with a quote. I love this quote from Wendell Berry. He's a farmer and activist and an environmentalist. And he said, people are fed by the food industry, which pays no attention to health, and are treated by the health industry, which pays no attention to food. That essentially, food and health are often siloed. I also added my own little twist to that, just showing that it's not just food and the food economy and, and health that is siloed, but the actual connection to the land and to the agricultural industry. And I really appreciate Jenna's comments on that. So our model really brings together food, health, and agriculture. We also bring in community safety, public safety, and uh, the community as a medicine approach. And that's really our all-in food as medicine model. So I'm gonna jump straight to the actual model in health centers. And so we in all-in, we are using this food as medicine initiative to support clinics to move upstream, to move midstream, to make the changes. And in the clinics, one of the clinics that we're working with right now is Native American Health Center, right in the center. We train the staff up on social determinants of health, uh, on, for example, food insecurity and social isolation, and how to actually bring and bridge that together with the clinical work downstream. So we train everyone to screen for food insecurity, so it's universal food insecurity screening. We then do what we all do in clinics, which is mainly treatment, sometimes prevention, and with this food for approach, we do the reversing of chronic disease. And we're really building two pieces of infrastructure. And I'm gonna go into each of these, but just as a high level, the food pharmacy is the first piece of infrastructure. And um, I'll go into the bullet points in my next slide. And just know that modular food pharmacies are built into the clinics in the waiting rooms. And they're staffed by the, the pharmacist, F-A-R-M-A, I. C F A R M A C I S T um, and farm basically, and we connect it into workflows with the CalFresh. And, and kind of like that. Our second infrastructure is around the behavioral pharmacy. So you'll, you'll wonder what is that, and so I'm going to give you more information about that. But essentially, the clinic is sandwiched, if you will, by food pharmacy and behavioral pharmacy, and we're scaling this across F F FQHCs in Alameda County. We have a behavioral site as well. Um, just for a community site for behavioral pharmacy. And then we are showing that this can improve health outcomes, healthcare utilization, and food insecurity. And the cool thing about all of this is we're moving policy change, where our goal is that health plans, such as Medi-Cal health plans in all the counties in California, cover medically, what we're calling medically supportive food, coupled with nutritional behavioral support. So I'm going to tell you more about all of this. This is the main picture, the main piece of my, uh, of my uh, presentation today. I'm going to go through each part. This is where we are stuck mainly every day. I just finished clinic this morning with my MA. We're cleaning up all the downstream issues that come to us from 15 years later. Diabetes developed over 15 years with type 2 diabetes. Obesity is not an overnight phenomenon. All these things come to us downstream, and yet we forget the upstream issue of these overflowing water uh, from the faucet. And that's really a lot of the social determinants of health issues that are bringing us our patients um, to the clinics. And that's a midstream and upstream issue. Our model focuses on food insecurity and social isolation. How does it do it? Well, if I were to ask each of you and you came to my clinic, what, what do I do, what do I give you when you're sick for your antibiotics? You'd probably say, for, I give you a prescription. And then I would ask you, where do you fill that? And I think most of you would say you go to a pharmacy. So a pharmacy is really a delivery system, a convenient, cost-effective, hopefully uh, convenient uh, and accessible place 
where you can actually get the pharmaceutical medicine. Well, how do we do that with all the other pieces of our lifestyle? So we took this concept of pharmacy as a, a delivery system and said, well, let's adapt, adapt that to food. So a food pharmacy in these clinics would be uh, these three elements, food that's sourced and, grow, and grown regeneratively. I do training on food as medicine with a chef MD and we train all the docs and nutritionists as well, just and CD, certified diabetes educators. We just do a lot of training together on how do you use food in a 15 to 20 minute visit. Now you as, um, many of you as WIC folks already know a lot of this, so that's great. Many of us in uh, medical care haven't gotten much training on how to use food in a 15 minute visit. And then we prescribe food through prescriptions. So that's, this is what it's gonna look like. This is in our, one of our sites in Traversio Vasquez in San Leandro. Um, Christian there is a food pharmacist. He works with Dig Deep Farms. He sets up shop every day at the clinic with locally grown fresh vegetables. So it's essentially this idea of a food pharmacy in a waiting room. Co-located, super accessible, it deals with transportation. This is where the food is sourced from. This is Sasha with some young people. This is a reclaimed parking lot in an unincorporated area of Cherryland um, and Ashland in, in uh, unincorporated Alameda County. There's a uh, greenhouse. This was a former parking lot. They rebuilt the soil using these principles of permaculture, earth care, fair care, and people care. And what that means is really biointensive farming in small plots of land, land with lots of different types of vegetables. It's composting, black gold. It's vermiculture using worms. It is street, it's also mulching and cover cropping. All of that leads to benefits of carbon sequestration, low pesticides, higher nutrient density, and improved soil health. So we're really bringing together soil health with human health. This is Troy, he's one of our food pharmacists at Dig Deep Farms. We partner with Dig Deep Farms. That um, parking lot is now this on the right. It's flush, it's flush, it's vibrant, there's murals. It's really about uh, helping blighted communities reclaim space in a way that is uh, also producing food. So that was our food pharmacy. I'm gonna move straight now into the behavioral pharmacy so we have some time for questions. What do we mean by behavioral pharmacy? Well, if you come to clinic and many of you go to see your patients or your doctors, you're often told to exercise more, to eat better, to reduce your stress and to get some social support. And then the doctor sends you off and it's essentially a behavioral prescription. And then the question is when you come back in three months, we hope that you've been able to do that and often nothing has been done. And so what's, what's the gap? The gap is there's not a a delivery system that's easy and accessible to our patients, especially the most vulnerable. So our behavioral pharmacy, just like our food pharmacy, does that. It's co-located on site, and we partner with Open Source Wellness, a nonprofit in the community, and it's all, it's this movement, nourishing, connecting, and being, all in a group medical visit. 15 to 25 patients together with a provider, with four health coaches, with a movement coach, moving for 30 minutes, doing a plant-based meal for, or a snack for a few, for 10, 15 minutes, um, health coaching with health coaches, and then stress reduction to uh, adapt the physiology uh, for stress and manage stress. These are very experiential groups. These are not your typical, let me talk to you for two hours and teach you about physiology. This is all doing. It's transdiagnostics, so or our doctors and our nurse practitioners and PAs can send anybody with diabetes, hypertension, obesity, whatnot, to this group medical visit, a behavioral pharmacy. And it's really great for clinics because it increases access. It's more productive than any typical half-day clinic. You can see way more patients. And it addresses provider burnout because we're not, we're not on a hamster wheel repeating the same spiel every 10 minutes. So it's really powerful model. In the COVID moment, what have we done? Well, we can't really meet in person for these groups. So our groups have moved to virtual visits. So this is an example. We have a movement coach and people are watching movement and we're all on Zoom cameras. And uh, in the group this morning, I was running with a Spanish speaking, all Spanish speaking patients with diabetes, obesity, uh, pre-diabetes, a uh, bunch of different conditions and they're moving and dancing and going through the whole group medical visit. Our food pharmacy model has moved to a doorstep delivery model. So our Dig Deep Farms delivers the food 
to each family now. And so that's pretty powerful. And this is all regeneratively grown food. It's fresher than whole foods. It's just sourced the day or be the day before. And it's really just amazingly beautiful as well as very tasty and delicious. What does this mean? And so the last part of my talk in the last four minutes of this talk, will four or five minutes will be around outcomes. And so I think what makes our work interesting is we're really going towards help outcomes. Meaning we're moving, we're gonna capture things like fruit and vegetable intake, which I think a lot of people do and exercise, but we're gonna actually get into impact on hypertension and depression and what. And so this, these graphs are basically gonna have a series of blue and then orange. Blue is pre and post is orange. And after a 16 week intervention where they're doing behavioral pharmacy with food, we're seeing an increase in vegetable and fruit intake uh, up to 1.4 servings per day. That's actually a lot, right? Because if you had one serving a day, that's 30,000 lives saved across the U.S. if everyone did that. Our exercise is going up as well, uh, many minutes. These are all statistically significant. We published some of this data in, uh, in an article last October. This is the interesting thing around the behavioral pharmacy and mental health. And so depression, is dropping on PHQ-9 scores from 12.8 moderate uh, depression down to minimal, 6.5, that's a 49% drop. Our anxiety drops as well from a GAD score, and even loneliness drops down as well. We know that social isolation is a big deal, especially the COVID moment. Finally, the, uh, or I should say almost finally, the blood pressure drops. Uh, we're able to drop blood pressure 16 points which is significant because we know that if your blood pressure goes up by 10 points, your chance of dying from stroke and heart attack is uh, double. And so we're dropping it by 16 points. Finally, uh, a lot of our administrators and healthcare uh, organizations love this part. We're able to drop hospitalizations and ER visits by 77%. So six months prior, people are hospitalized 22 times or in the ER and then Six months later, after the intervention, or during and after the intervention, it dropped down the five. So that was a whirlwind. I did this in about 13 minutes, just to leave time for uh, questions. Um, I want to close it out with this slide, just to show that it's all connected in our model. Health and food and soil are connected. Human health, soil health, and really planetary health. And we, we're starting with clinics, uh, with food pharmacies and hospitals. You grow that outwards with uh, we have food recovery effort with growers, uh, food bank, healthy retail, kind of what Joe's work is doing, um, and then out to community-based organizations and health insurers. We're working with uh, our Medi-Cal health state, our Medi-Cal plan on this whole process. Working with government, I, I'm in the government sector, and working with the FPHCs. So as a fast whirlwind into uh, the work that we're doing in the healthcare space, and I want to pause and and then give it back over to Karen, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Chan. That was really informative, and um, I appreciate the uh, information you shared for your adaptions for the pandemic, but I also appreciate the fact we were able to hear from you about concepts that are really integral to healthcare reform and upstream planning and social determinants of health. We don't really want to forget all that good work that was started the last decade and get diverted on that in the pandemic. And actually the pandemic just more clearly exposes the need for that type of care um, in our food and healthcare systems. So I appreciate um, your slides and how you presented your information. Um, Sarah, I yeah. wanted to see if you want to just open up if people would prefer to just verbalize their questions and if people could just mute themselves if they think they have background information, I mean background noise, and um, uh, see if we want to just have a discussion either or questions asked verbally if people would like to do that. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing the ability to unmute everyone at once, but if anyone has a question and wants to put their hand up, um, I'm happy to unmute you. And I'm also seeing a question in the chat box. Um, that are you planning to share the slides? So uh, I can send the slides via email with permission from um, panelists. Let me see. 
Yes, we'll, we'll share the slides and also the list that um, uh, Sarah referenced in the chat box and Joe uh, referenced. There's a list of over 300 nutrition incentive programs around the state um, that was that involve healthcare farmers market or retail. And um, we'll send that out to everybody after the presentation. All right, I think we have a question from Alda. Alda, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself down on the bottom? Okay, there you go. You gotcha. Yeah, this is Alda, and I'm aware that Dimitri Vasquez strongly addressed that um, food as medicine, and I think it's a really great, exciting project. But me is one who think big, <laughs> and I was wondering, it's like, how can we improve? not just the clinic, but is there a move towards involving the bigger hospitals so that they involve uh, food as medicine in, in their counseling, in counseling their patients? Great question, Alda. Our focus in building this work is currently at the front door of primary care as, as the entry point prior to entry into the hospital. So a little more upstream of the hospital. That said, Washington Hospital, if you're local, has approached us in the past to think about what would this look like in a hospital setting to do food as medicine, uh, either in their kitchens as well as uh, the services when the patients are hospitalized. So currently, the work is more upstream in the hospital. But certainly, this work needs to be done in all settings. We just need champions uh, and people who want to lead and to collaborate to make that happen. And we'd be happy to follow. I mean, Hi, thank this you. Is, this, is, this is Joe with uh, UCSD. I'd also like to um, let everyone know that the USDA is really doing something that is really um, commendable, and that is, is that they're looking to integrate the food system providers with the healthcare system providers. And that's particularly evident through the um, nutrition, the, the nutrition uh, pr the produce prescription programs, uh, like Dr. Chen's program. So hopefully we're going to see more and more of this innovation and this integration and the leveraging of those resources uh, between and among the food system partners as well as the healthcare system partners, and hopefully at all levels. So we're hoping to hear and learn more about that with uh, future iterations of the uh, Gus Schumacher Nutrition Incentive Funding moving forward. So thank you for that question. Uh, there's a question, will the clients be able to use their WIC e-card and fruit and vegetable benefit at the farmer's market eventually? Yeah, I don't think we have any attendees here from State WIC, but I can answer that in a very basic way. And that is um, farmers will have to be authorized to accept the card. The transaction is not the same as the SNAP transaction. And the state, and that's for the cash value benefit, not the seasonal farmer's market nutrition program. So with the new card, farmers will be authorized. So the state has been working diligently to one, roll out the card in all the uh, WIC agencies that just happened on March 31st during the final rollout uh, across the state, which happened also during the COVID crisis. Um, and then has been working um, as the card rolled out in the stores and in the clinics with the farmers who will be authorized and all the education and training that's needed with the farmers market, the managers and the farmers. So there'll be more to come on that, but the state's really been um, a believer in using the cat, using the WIC card at the farmers markets. It's just a, it's a process to get everybody adapted. And then the farmers market nutrition uh, benefits will still be a check booklet. And the local WIC agencies, some of you are on the line have, been having a lot of recent conversations about how you can work with your farmer's market this year with the COVID situation. So another opportunity for partnerships and innovation. And we would actually like to have another webinar on um, what kind of partnerships and ideas are coming up to deal with COVID and ensure that the, um, far, the WIC participants can participate in the farmer's market purchases. So if anybody wants to 
uh, share their innovations and partnerships they're trying to develop for this season, uh, let us know. I just want to and quickly echo um, what Karen said. This is Jenna at Ecology Center. We know that um, when there are more than one nutrition incentive programs or more than one uh, benefits are able to be accepted, then, you know, the better the program is for the customer and the easier it is to access. Um, there's some research around that. So um, I appreciate the question and conversation. And it's also important to, to realize that um, USDA is expanding the program and has expanded the program to include more than just the, uh, the SNAP recipients. So the standard model at retail, such as the Moss Fresco program or the program at the farmer's market with Market Match, um, those programs do require that the participants be um, SNAP recipients. And here in California, that's CalFresh recipients. But the produce prescription programs like, um, uh, like the All in Alameda County program, those programs are based on need. And it's up to the healthcare professionals, the doctors and others there, to determine um, if folks are in need, at, in need because of um, uh, chronic disease risk, in need because of food insecurity, um, in need for other reasons. So in that way, the program is, is able to expand beyond just the SNAP recipients or here in California, the CalFresh recipients. And so it makes it available, produce prescription programs like the All in Alameda County program make the nutrition incentives available to a greater, um, greater number of people. So there's a question, uh, was there a change in buying habits from the Moss Fresco participants? And what I mean is, did they purchase other types of food with their own money since they received money to purchase fruits and vegetables? Right. So the program is pretty amazing in terms of our ability to um, assess and understand the purchasing habits of the program participants. So with our program, we're working in partnership with Northgate Gonzalez Market. And each and every month, Northgate Gonzalez Market sends us a comprehensive data feed of every single transaction. And in that transaction, we, we know exactly what the program participants spent on their entire purchase. So what, what it looks like for fruits and vegetables, which fruits and vegetables, how much fruits and vegetables, all of that. And so for, for that, we can tell you that, you know, what's the number one most commonly purchased uh, fruit or vegetable? And that would be bananas is the number one. Um, and then also for our population, working with Northgate Gonzalez Market, you know, we've got uh, folks purchasing an abundant amount of tomatoes and limes and lemons and other ingredients that, that um, you might be using for salsa and things like that. So we get a wealth of information um, from the um, actual transaction data for, the, for, for each and every um, participant. And a question, will there be a market match with WIC at the farmer's market? Hi, Marina. Um, the short answer is yes, but depends where you are. And to describe in a few more sentences, just as Joe said, the Gus Schumacher program um, is for primarily CalFresh um, incentive matching. And that is the primary funding source right now for Market Match. However, um, depending on locale, um, there could be a WIC matching program under Market Match. There are markets that match FMNP. There are markets that match CVB. Um, particularly in LA, there used to be a historical program under the first five LA that provided a lot of nutrition incentives for WIC benefits. Um, so I encourage you to go to fnfinder.org and um, see where your local market is and see how the benefits are described there. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other questions. Anyone else have any? Oh, I see a hand up. 
Um, I have a question for well, my fellow panelists while we wait. Is that okay. okay to ask? Yeah. So Joe, great work with all that data that you can get from the healthy retail um, and buying habits. And my question is, is there a way to link those who are participating in the mass fresco to their health centers or their health records? Is there, a, is there an automated way or a, a HIPAA compliant way of doing so? Yeah, thanks, Dr. Chen, for that question. And that actually um, expands even to the, the health departments and other folks that are doing um, nutrition education. So what we're looking to do with the expansion of the program is we're looking to align with all of the CalFresh Healthy Living Program partners here in California, Southern California, and that is the, those SNAP-Ed programs nationally that are conducting nutrition education and what we're looking to do is we're looking to um, enroll a subset of those uh, participants into the Moss Fresco program so that then we could actually report back to the CalFresh Healthy Living Program or to the clinic, hey, here's the impact of your nutrition education on the purchase of fruits and vegetables because we can actually track day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, we can track the purchase of the fruits and vegetables in conjunction with the nutrition education or the classes that they're receiving at the healthcare clinic or at the WIC clinic or at the health department or wherever they might be. So we are in conversation with um, Orange County Healthcare Agency, with Los Angeles County Public Health Department and the San Diego Health and Human Services Agency to work with their CalFresh Healthy Living Program partners to integrate the two programs so that we can support, better support nutrition education and actually um, help the folks to purchase um, healthier foods via the incentives with the fruits and, for the fruit and vegetable purchases. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, um, we have a question from Karen Gillian and uh, I unmuted you, Karen, so you should be able to go. Karen. She's written her question into the chat. Is there any possibility that there could be a FMMP match in a market that doesn't accept EBT? If not, what about a CVV match? Merced County currently has only one certified market. Many of our growers don't come to the local market. They go to the Bay Area. Our participants need more opportunities. So she's asking for Hi, an FMN, FMNP match in a market that doesn't accept EBP mm -hmm. or CVV. Hi, Karen. Sorry. Oh, no worries. This is Jenna. Um, it's, it's definitely a possibility. Um, there are markets in the state that have really targeted models to families um, rather than individuals, for instance, there are some mobile markets that are very family friendly. And so they really lean into uh, WIC benefits and providing incentives on WIC benefits. Um, so I, if, if you'd like to discuss further, um, feel free to contact me. And I know the contact information will be coming after the call. Um, and then there was another question, Dr. Chen, are your pharmacy workers volunteers and was the parking lot donated? Oh, I see that you answered that um, in the box. Never mind. All right, any other questions? I don't think so. Okay. Well, it's 1.30, so we're right on time. And we wanted to thank Dr. Chen and Jenna and Joe for the work you're doing in your communities and across the state. It really makes a difference. And it really is clear that while we have some federal partnerships and some state partnerships, these local partnerships really 
are instrumental in driving change. And this might be an opportunity to make change move more quickly as we see the great need for health and preservation of health and particularly nutrition at this unusual time. So thank you for your long-term work in this and thank you especially for this work at this really critical time. And we are open to helping people connect with you and in their communities to form partnerships and think innovatively. Great. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.